John Updike, the novelist, uh, wrote a lovely poem uh, which begins, uh, neutrinos, they are very small. They have no charge and have no mass. They do not interact at all. In, in that one couplet, uh, this great author has made two errors because neutrinos do have mass and they do interact. So what are these uh, particles? Let me go back and talk about energy conservation. We all are very concerned about conserving energy. But let me assure you that we don't have to worry at all about conserving energy because one of the most fundamental laws of physics is that energy is conserved. You can neither create it nor destroy it. So don't worry about conserving energy. Uh, but there was a time in the 1920s when some uh, experimenters who were studying radioactivity, which had only been discovered some years back, uh, found an effect that uh, indicated that maybe the law of conservation of energy, uh, which is uh, as sacred as a law in physics can be, maybe it wasn't true. And there was evidence that it was violated. And famous physicists like uh, Marie Curie, well, she's half a physicist, half a chemist. Uh, Neil Spohr, others, uh, began to worry that maybe energy wasn't conserved. But then, uh, in the, uh, I think it was in December of 1930, the great Swiss physicist Wolfgang Pauli decided that he didn't want to go to the physics conference which was to be given in Germany uh, in the next week. Uh, because it conflicted with the Zurich Ball. So he wanted to, he much preferred dancing than going to physics conferences. Very sensible physicist he was. That, that does not explain why he won the Nobel Prize. But anyway, he wrote a letter to his uh, colleagues at the conference that he would not attend. Uh, in those days, there were very few people who studied radioactivity, so he wrote, uh, in German, dear radioactive colleagues, he wrote, I have a desperate remedy for this problem of uh, the conservation of energy. And what he suggested is that there existed a particle unheard of, undetected, that no one had ever heard of, and that this particle stole the energy. And this was a crazy thing to do. This was a long time ago, 1930. There weren't many different kinds of particles. In fact, there were just two protons and electrons, uh, and he invented a third one. Uh, the trouble was uh, that, according to his uh, scribbles, he, this particle could never be detected, and he was very upset because his particle was getting more and more press, but he realized that nobody could ever see it. And indeed, nobody ever saw it for 25 years. It took 25 years until some American guys uh, managed to detect the particle that was predicted 25 years before. And they sent a telegram to uh, Wolfgang Pauli telling, them, telling him that at last, the particle that you predicted in 1930, we've detected, we've seen it in 1955. Of course, Western Union lost the uh, telegram, so it was never delivered. But nonetheless, Pauli found out. He was very happy. The sun produces energy. Well, you can't produce energy. There, it changes uh, one form of energy into another form of energy and sends it to us as light. We all know that. But some of that energy is in the form of neutrinos. And astrophysicists are very smart. They computed that 10% of the energy of the sun comes to us as neutrinos. Neutrinos which go right through you and right through the Earth, and you can't see them. Very hard to see. Could anyone observe these neutrinos? And by the way, lots of them are going through. Through my finger, a million million of them are going through every second of the day and the, uh, and the night. So there are a lot of these little particles are around. Could we see them? Uh, and again, a couple of American physicists succeeded in detecting solar neutrinos, neutrinos coming from the sun. But this led to another problem. The good news was Yes, the astrophysicists are right. The sun produces neutrinos. But the bad news was there weren't enough of them. And this led to a 
tremendously big problem called, not surprisingly, the solar neutrino problem, which bothered physicists for decades because these observations were done in the 1970s and 1980s. And then finally, ultimately, the problem was solved and it hit the newspapers all over the New York Times. The, uh, an experiment done in, of all places, Canada, an international experiment, discovered the missing neutrinos. The sun does produce all these neutrinos and our friends didn't see them because the neutrinos are very weird particles. They change their spots as they travel. This is a kind of particle that I'm absolutely fascinated with. And in fact, just last week, 10 days ago, I wrote another little paper about neutrinos, not very exciting, uh, but pointing out some curious things about them. And I got back uh, 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 two letters from people I knew from ancient days, uh, emails. Uh, a, a man named uh, Bert Stech in Hamburg, a professor who was my teacher. So there's a very small cohort of people in the world, of which I am one, who are very interested in this one peculiar sort of particle. So now you know everything about neutrinos. <laughs> What's next? You want to hear about neutrons? <laughs> we'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs>